Okay, uh, in this video then I'm going to go through um, uh, transpiration and uh, the factors that affect how quick that uh, process can happen. Um, so I'm going to use uh, various diagrams hopefully to uh, explain this for everyone. So firstly, uh, with this diagram, um, it's, uh, it's a representation of the leaf and uh, in particular the spongy mesophyll cells of the leaf. Um, and underneath that is the uh, lower epidermis with the stomatal pore. So uh, what is transpiration? Well, it's when water evaporates from the mesophyll cells in the leaf. So that means it turns, the water turns into a gas. And that water vapour then leaves the leaf via the stomata. So it's ultimately the loss of water vapour from the leaf via the stomata. Okay. And uh, that's what um, uh, is partially shown on this diagram. Uh, it's not showing water leaving. That, that will be on the next uh, diagram. But uh, that's basically what uh, transpiration is. Okay, so um, this diagram then shows uh, the water vapour leaving the stomatal pore and uh, water is going to be diffusing and uh, that will be obviously down a diffusion gradient or you can say... Uh, the water's moving down a water potential gradient. That would be acceptable uh, as well. So for water to, to diffuse through the stomata, uh, the water has to go through what we call a diffusion shell. And uh, a diffusion shell is just uh, water vapour that is accumulating on the under surface of the leaf and uh, the bigger that diffusion shell uh, the less uh, diffusion of water uh, happens out of the plant okay so we're going to look at this diffusion shell uh, in a moment when we look at uh, some of the factors affecting transpiration rate but uh, this is uh, this is showing transpiration it's the loss of water vapor from the leaf via uh, the stomata so uh, the, the first factor then that uh, we're going to look at is the humidity of the uh, atmosphere so the humidity is really how much water vapor uh, is in the atmosphere surrounding the leaf of a plant. So uh, on the diagram here on the left, okay, we have uh, a very short or shallow diffusion shell. Uh, so that's saying that there's low humidity uh, in the atmosphere. So when you have that, you have a steep uh, diffusion gradient. Uh, so you can see I've got a large arrow there representing the diffusion of water out of the uh, stomata. Okay, so this uh, would uh, increase uh, the rate of transpiration. Okay, so low, low humidity uh, increases the rate of transpiration. Uh, on the next diagram, we've got high humidity and therefore we've got this rather thick uh, diffusion uh, shell. So what that diffusion shell is doing uh, is that it, it's representing um, a high uh, concentration of water. Okay, so that means that the diffusion gradient uh, from inside the leaf here to outside the leaf here uh, is shallow. Okay, so that's represented by the uh, the narrower arrow. So we have a shallower uh, diffusion gradient 
and therefore you get less water diffusing out of the leaf. So this would uh, result in a reduction in the rate uh, of transpiration. Um, so in addition to uh, understanding how humidity affects uh, transpiration rate, uh, we need to be able to interpret um, a graphical version of the effect of humidity on uh, rate of transpiration. Uh, so this is the graph here and um, at the top of the graph along this uh, plateau region what we have is uh, a high rate of uh, transpiration and that corresponds to down here uh, a low humidity. Okay. Now, um, when the humidity reaches a uh, certain point, the transpiration rate starts to go down. Okay, so the rate is, uh, is reducing. So what's happening along this um, decline here uh, is you're getting um, a shallower uh, diffusion gradient. Okay, and uh, that is what's causing the slowing of the rate of transpiration. Uh, when you get down to the, the bottom graph here, uh, the rate of transpiration becomes very low, uh, but also constant. Okay, so you can almost uh, imagine here that the um, the underside of the leaf is completely saturated with water vapour and the diffusion shell will be very thick uh, on the underside of the leaf. So that's the, uh, the graph, uh, graphical version of uh, the effect of humidity. So... The next factor uh, is air speed uh, or wind speed and um, the diagram on the left represents low uh, air speed and um, when you have low air speed um, you, you get the accumulation of water vapour on the underside of the leaf and uh, the, the wind uh, or air speed is so slow that uh, it doesn't blow away many water vapour molecules. So what this is uh, showing is that you have uh, a shallow uh, diffusion gradient between the inside of the leaf and the outside. Uh, so the rate there uh, is going to be uh, low. So you get a low rate of transpiration. <clears throat> right, with the high uh, wind speed, um, you can see that the water vapour molecules are blown away. You get far more being blown away. And uh, this reduces the size of the diffusion shell. So ultimately, you have a, a much steeper diffusion gradient, uh, shown by the uh, bigger arrow there. All right, so with a high wind speed, you ultimately get an increase in the rate of uh, transpiration because you have a steeper uh, diffusion gradient. OK, uh, if we look at the graph now to show rate of transpiration against airspeed, uh, it's pretty much a linear relationship uh, where the faster the airspeed, the more water vapour is blown away and therefore the steeper the diffusion gradient becomes. So right down uh, the bottom part of this graph you have uh, a shallow uh, diffusion gradient, DG there, diffusion gradient. And right at the top, you'll have the uh, the steepest uh, gradient there. And therefore, the faster or the fastest rate of transpiration. 
Okay, so that's uh, air speed done. Next uh, is light intensity. Uh, so when we're talking about light intensity, uh, we're ultimately talking about uh, the stomata and whether that stomata is open or closed because light intensity affects uh, whether the stomata is open or closed. Or we could also say affects the diameter of the stomatal pore. Uh, and the stomatal pore is, is obviously there uh, for that diagram and uh, there uh, for this one. So uh, with low light intensity then, uh, you know, in the evenings uh, or in the um, early mornings when the light intensity is low, uh, the stomata will be closed. And with it being closed, uh, there's reduced uh, loss of water from that stomata because of the narrower diameter of the, of the pore. So water is less likely to uh, diffuse out uh, because of that. Now obviously with high light intensity uh, the stomatal pore opens a lot wider and this will increase uh, transpiration rate because more water is able to diffuse out of the wider stomatal pore. So on the left hand side you've got uh, a slow rate and then on the right we have a high uh, rate of transpiration there. So graphically then this is what um, it looks like. So when the light intensity uh, increases so does the rate of transpiration. So if we split this graph into A and B okay so in region A, uh, the rate of transpiration is going up and that is because the light intensity is increasing. But down here, uh, right at the start, we'll just say that the stomata is closed. OK, so as the light intensity increases, the diameter of the stomata uh, increases up to this point here where I've just drawn the arrow. So at that point, the stomata is open at its widest. It cannot open any wider. OK, so just write open there. No, I'll put open at widest. OK, so um, region A shows a progressive increase in the diameter of the stomatal pore that then causes more water to diffuse out and then we hit a plateau and that plateau means that the stomatal pore cannot open any wider because we've already said at that arrow there it's widest uh, it's at its widest so uh, in region b no matter how much you increase the light intensity the rate will remain uh, constant. <clears throat> uh, and that, as I've said, is because the stomata cannot open any wider. OK, so that is uh, light intensity. So the last uh, factor now is, is temperature. So I'm just showing the graph here um, of temperature against rate of transpiration. Uh, now, obviously, the temperature that that's actually needed for uh, the evaporation of water, uh, which occurs from the surface of the cells in the leaf. OK, so the higher the temperature, the, the more evaporation occurs within the leaf. So you've ultimately got more water vapour inside the leaf. But temperature also increases diffusion rate as well. OK, so uh, with a higher temperature, you've got the water molecules moving. They have more kinetic energy. Um, so that's what causes the increased rate in diffusion and ultimately 
uh, the increased rate in uh, transpiration. So again, uh, this graph looks very similar to the stomatal uh, graph. Um, in region A, um, what you're getting uh, is an increase in the rate of transpiration based on an increase in temperature. Okay, but then in B, um, you get this plateau again. So that means that any further increase in temperature will not produce an increase in rate. So really you've got the maximum rate of transpiration occurring. You've got the maximum amount of evaporation in the leaf. Uh, so no further temperature rise will um, increase the rate of transpiration. So it plateaus out there. Okay, lastly, um, just need to mention, uh, sometimes you'll get a question comparing uh, water loss from a porous pot and from a leaf. So I just want to highlight to you that uh, with a porous pot, um, it has small holes in it, which are the black dots. And uh, the black dots do not, or the, the holes, should I say, do not change size. All right, so those uh, holes or pores have a constant diameter. That means water will evaporate from that porous pot at a, at a constant rate. Okay, uh, with the leaf, of course, you've got the uh, stomata that can open and close. So you often get a question looking at uh, uh, evaporation, which happens from the porous pot, and transpiration from the leaf at different times of the day. And uh, it's the times of day that link in with light intensity. Okay, so um, light intensity will affect the diameter of the stomatal pore, but it won't affect the diameter of the pores in the porous pot. So you need to, uh, you may be asked to sort of explain the difference uh, in a, in a question there. Uh, in the notes, I do have an example graph uh, that you can read over. Uh, to show the effect of light intensity on transpiration and evaporation um, with the porous pot. Okay, so these are the factors that affect the rate of transpiration. And uh, the next video, we'll look at how we measure the rate of transpiration um, with an instrument called a potometer.